So I'm going to cover uh, some of kind of the new content and samples that we've got for SharePoint Embedded and uh, show you some of the new material that you can use to get started. So um, if you haven't come across SharePoint Embedded yet, uh, at a high level, kind of like its name implies, it's a way for you to embed SharePoint storage into your custom application. It's a headless platform as a service that offers a set of pay-as-you-go APIs available on Microsoft Graph that allow you to allow your custom application to store and manage content in an M365 tenant. Um, it comes with a whole bunch of capabilities out of the box. It's Copilot ready. Talk a little bit about that today, but not going to do a deep dive there. Um, it's compliant, and so content gets stored in your customer's tenant, the, the tenant that's running the application. And so content there is automatically compliant by default, adheres to data residency and other um, other protections that you get through Microsoft Purview. It gets a whole bunch of um, core storage capabilities, core enterprise storage capabilities right out of the box when you build on top of SharePoint Embedded. And you get collaboration by default. And so you get to um, not only take advantage of our fully capable preview client, I think I'll be able to show you that today, but also the rich collaboration experiences that you get through Office. You can use that um, in your custom applications when you build them on top of SharePoint Embedded. All right, last time I was on here, which was a little bit over a month ago, I was um, inviting you to attend a couple of events that we were having through the month of September, one in New York City and one in London. We had those events. Um, they went off really well. Uh, if you weren't able to attend, though, I just wanted to invite you to access our presentations and hands-on lab material. They're available in our sample app repository. There's a big link there at the bottom of this slide at aka.ms slash spe samples. When you go there, and that's what we're going to spend a little bit of time on today is, is doing stuff from our sample app repo. If you go into the fall 24 events uh, folder within there, you can see the presentations that we went over as well as a couple of hands-on labs that you can use, um, you know, if you want to get started with SharePoint Embedded. So hopefully you can kind of access that material if you were you wanted to attend those events and you weren't able to go through that material if you can um, and and you know if you have any questions feel free to reach out. Um, we also have a couple of new samples that are available uh, sample applications that are available within this repository as well and I wanted to showcase those. Uh, one of them is Power Platform. We're actually going to do a deep dive here in a few weeks. Steve P is going to do that. Uh, so I'm not going to go deep into that today, um, but what I will say is that we are in the midst of building um, a Power Platform data connector for SharePoint Embedded, so that you can use that for you know making flows of Power Automate or uh, Power Apps and things like that. So we'll talk more about that in a few weeks, but uh, if that's something that you're passionate about, be, be sure to attend that when it takes place. And, and again, you can reach out in the chat if if you have any questions, or you can email us at SharePointEmbedded at Microsoft.com if you want to talk about your use case to make sure it's covered by what we're building. The thing we're going to go into today is this new sample app that we have published. Um, it's called the SBE-TypeScript React Azure Function Sample App. I'm going to go to the next slide. It just explains what it is a little bit. Um, <clears throat> there's a whole bunch of new capabilities in here that I just wanted to highlight today, and we're going to go kind of get going with that uh, from scratch today together. It includes custom copilot control. So this is pretty cool. Right now, um, it's in private preview. And so you have to be a member of our private preview program in order to take advantage of it. I'll just say that out right now. Um, if you'd like to sign up, though, you can go to ak.ms slash SPE copilot preview. What that allows you to do is to drop that custom copilot control into your custom application that's built on SharePoint Embedded. And you can do a whole bunch of capabilities in there. Um, specifically, you get all of kind of the power that folks are used to with Copilot, but you can give it a custom instruction and customize the starter prompts and things like that, customize the theme and, and the experience of it, the look and feel, as well as ground it on specific content. And that content can be in your SharePoint embedded containers, file storage containers, or it could come from OneDrive and SharePoint as well. The really cool thing is that this is that experience in your custom application. So let's say you've got an HR app or an app that helps folks manage projects or something like that. 
you can customize the experience of that custom copilot depending on which users using your app, what page they're on, the history and context of how they've been using your application, maybe what, what particular um, thing that they're looking at in your app. So it allows you to, you know, with pro code, really customize and deliver um, a great customized uh, copilot experience in your application. And a few more things now, just kind of bubbling back up about this new sample app, and then we'll get hands on. Uh, it, it's easy to use with GitHub code spaces. That's what I'm going to show today. If you haven't used it before, don't worry. It's uh, it makes it really easy to get started with our samples. It's refactored and written in TypeScript, so it just makes it makes it simpler to kind of understand how things work. Ultimately, it's a sample, and we want to teach you how to use different aspects of the SharePoint embedded product and platform. And so it's it's structured and a little bit more clean, so you can see how that exactly works. It's integrated into the SharePoint Embedded Visual Studio Code extension. I'm not going to show that aspect today, but I will kind of touch on how you can use that. And then it adds a new capability. So we've got a, a, a use case in the app called Receipt Processing, and I'll show that today. Um, it does a whole bunch of things that you can do with SharePoint Embedded that I want to kind of show off. It integrates with Azure AI Document Intelligence to extract fields from receipts. It uses webhooks, both uh, a webhook subscription and a socket I.O. subscription for backend processing and fast front-end updates. Um, and then it takes advantage of metadata support. So you can have custom columns on file storage containers within SharePoint Embedded. So it takes those extracted fields from the receipts and sets them as fields on those files in there. So that's a lot of stuff. I'm going to actually give you a quick tour of it. So we're going to get into the demo here. Um, first of all, I'm just going to show you if you want to use this with SharePoint Embedded Visual Studio Code extension, you want to run our new sample app. It's really simple. Last time I was on here, I showed you how you get started with this. I'm not going to go through that today. It's pretty straightforward. But once you're signed in and using the extension, if you right click on your owning application, there's a few things you can do. One of them is run sample apps, and you can go to this TypeScript React Azure Functions sample. That's the new sample I'm going to show you here today. When you do that, it will actually automatically clone the GitHub repository for our, where our sample apps live to your local machine. And it will inject the configuration values needed to run the app. And all you have to do is hit run. And you are up and running with that sample application on your local developer machine. I'm going to show you a different approach, to, approach today. Um, so this is our sample app repo. So when you go to aka.ms slash SPE dash samples, this is what you're looking at. Here's the new folder with fall 24 events. Um, that's where the presentations and labs are from the events that we did last month. And then samples is where we've got a handful of samples, including this new one that I'm going to show you. Today, what I'm going to do, though, is actually fork this repository. I'm going to create a fork of it in my personal GitHub account. That should uh, you know, create effectively another repository that's forked off of that main one. And then what I'm going to do, so this is my own kind of personal, I can here, you know, create PRs and, and these, this is all, all these samples are open source. So very much encouraged if you want to, you know, create a PR, fork and create your own PR and you see a way to improve, then please, by all means, do that. Um, what I did there, though, I, I did that really quickly. Let me just quickly show that. I went to code and in, in code spaces, I went created a new code space. So again, if you haven't used code spaces before, um, I, I recommend you do that. Uh, you can, of course, um, set up a couple of free ones depending on what GitHub your account you're using. Um, and eventually, if you have too many code spaces, you do have to pay for it. It's uh, nothing to do with SharePoint Embedded. It's a GitHub capability. Um, so, but I do recommend you know giving those a shot if you haven't tried them out before. So this is that same repository we're looking at in a GitHub code space. It's effectively a Docker container that's running here. Um, and so the cool thing about that though is like. If I don't have a very good developer machine or I'm on the go, I can create a code space and it will automatically, you know, get a machine that's up and running and ready to go for this particular sample app. So it's pretty powerful stuff. I'm going to open this up and this is the new sample that we're talking about, SPE TypeScript React Azure Function. So I will open that up. Now to get this going, all I need to do is paste a couple of configuration files here. I already have those ready to go. Um, they they can you know automatically get generated from from that uh, Visual Studio Code extension when you run it locally. They're pretty self-explanatory. Um, I just put these configuration files in here. There's there's two. 
Effectively, this sample runs a backend API service on Azure Functions and a front client side uh, application written in React and TypeScript. So I need uh, two configuration files. One of them is for the back end. So I'm going to just drop that in there. And yes, I want to move that in there. And then I'm going to drop in the client side into the React client. And there's templates for what these files look like if you, um, if you want to do this yourself as well. Um, I'm going to actually now open up the local environment. There's no secrets in here. Um, just to give you a sense of what this looks like, and the server side has some secrets in there, so I'm not going to open that up. Uh, but it's effectively, you know, my tenant information, the, app, the Azure Enter app ID that I'm going to be using, the container type ID, which is a SharePoint embedded concept that identifies which containers belong to my application, and then the sample app URL. Um, so. What I need to do is actually update the sample app URL because when you run an app on code spaces, you get a publicly accessible uh, URL that you can access on it. So first of all, I'm going to kick off running. Sorry, it's just asking if I want to allow access to the clipboard. I'm going to open up an integrated terminal at the root of this sample app. And I'm going to um, go to ports here, and you can see, so the name of my code space is Upgraded Waffle. Uh, GitHub assigns a funny name when you do that. I'm gonna make, there's two ports that are automatically opened, 7072, so this is the back end, and 8080 is the front end. I'm gonna make those both public so that I can actually access this app running in a browser. And I'm going to copy the API one, so I'll copy the local address and I'll paste that in here so that when I run the app, it's actually going to talk to the correct backend set of APIs. I'll save that file. Now in my terminal, I can just go npm start run start. And this is going to run both the client and the server apps. It takes a few minutes because it needs to install all of the NPM libraries for both the client and the server. But it's actually, I have a pretty good laptop, what I'll say. When I do this locally, it runs decently fast. When I do it um, in a GitHub code space, it seems to be on a very powerful machine, uh, more powerful than my laptop, and it runs uh, seems to run much quicker. The other cool thing is if I look in this dev container, like I mentioned, these, these apps are kind of makes it simple to run with GitHub code spaces, um, our sample apps. It, it has this container, it's using an image here that is just a universal um, dev container and also sets it up with Azure Functions core tools so that like, I didn't have to do anything special here. Um, like I would have had to you know install a bunch of stuff on my local machine. I have this image ready to go um, so that I can actually just run, run this app. Okay. So if we look, it looks like it's starting the front-end development server. Um, I'm just gonna, I think I already made my ports public. So, so with these ports public, I'm gonna now uh, copy the front-end URL. So that's the React client. I will uh, copy the local address of that. And there's one more thing that I need to do. In order to run this, I need to actually add, go to my um, Azure Entra app configuration. So this is the, app that I'm running the front end in, and I have to add a redirect URI under the single page application configuration, because I just got this brand new URL. We just made this code space together. So I have to add that URL here, and I will press enter and save that. Okay, and so now I have this single page app redirect URL um that that i can use now i can actually like log into my sample so i should be able to if i've done everything correctly which you know the demo gods don't always work navigate to this url and we should see this new sample that we just built together this is just github code spaces warning that lets you know that i'm accessing um an application that's hosted on github code space it's not meant for production use we're just playing with the sample here so i will sign in and if everything worked, fingers crossed, I have signed in with my admin account. I already granted consent, so I'm going to skip that. 
Um, and now, hopefully, I will navigate to the containers page. It's a little slow. I'm doing some silly things. You can see here I've got uh, a few file storage containers that are available. I'm going to click on this receipt processing container. OK, so this container is empty. What I'm actually going to do now is I mentioned that we have this receipt processing demo that's available. What that is, is it automatically will inter inter integrate with Azure AI document intelligence to extract receipt fields from the files that I put on there and set them as metadata on this container. So I'm going to paste um, some receipts in here and I'm going to upload them. OK, so it just really quickly uploaded them and I'll show you what our preview client looks like. And so I can open up. This is literally my own personal receipt. So I have paid for parking at the Port of Seattle when I was flying somewhere. Um, and that's just a receipt. You can see I have another receipt here. I'm not sure what this one is. The Home Depot receipt looks like I bought some stuff. That one's a PDF. Again, all of that's rendering in our very capable uh, preview client that you can take advantage of in your own custom applications. Um, now, I just pressed this button to enable receipt processing. What that did is it added some, it basically added a, a schema to this particular file storage container and um, allows me to set metadata on the files that are in this container. And also what it did is it set up a webhook. So anytime I add new files in this container, it will automatically process, call my backend API to process those files to, with Azure Document Intelligence to extract fields from those. And then it sets the metadata on those files using that schema I defined in my file storage, storage container. Now, you're seeing the UX. You're seeing this UI update automatically in the background. That is because I'm using a Socket I.O. subscription on this file storage container. So my front end client has a Socket I.O. subscription that's available through the Graph APIs on this file storage container that gets notified when anything changes on this file storage container. So files are updated or metadata set like you can see here. It is going to automatically update the, the experience that you see here. And so we looked at that airport parking receipt. You can see the expense here. It was $154 US, and it extracted the merchant and the total and let me know that it's processed. Um, it was, you know, from the Port of Seattle, it was 154 bucks. So pretty cool stuff. Um, you can take a look at the source code. The one thing I'll say is that the integration with Azure AI Document Intelligence, it is a pro code solution. So I've, you know, the source does it itself. It is very straightforward to do using. Uh, the libraries that are available to you, it's a couple lines of code, and you can do the same field extraction using the built receipt model. I didn't show it today, um, but what you have also, if you are part of the private preview program, you can use the automatic, this is a different running instance of it, but you can uh, take advantage of the custom copilot that we have here to be able to list and summarize files, customize experiences, and ask questions about your content in SharePoint Embedded using the power of copilot. So, 859, I think I only have a few seconds left. We can leave it there. <laughs> Thank you very much for the time today. Appreciate it. If you have any questions, you can put them on the chat or reach out to SharePoint Embedded at Microsoft.com. Thank you. Thank you.